Welcome back to the Attack on Titan Enemy Review Part 7. Yeah, I decided to simply put for this one, originally I was going to split the two parts because last night I was interrupted because, well, dinner was ready, so I had to stop and then hopefully I could do part two. I decided to simply do, nah, start over. But yeah, but this particular part I'm talking about the two anime films was just the first two anime films released for Attack on Titan. And it's Attack on Titan Part 1, Crimson Bow and Arrow, Attack on Titan Part 2, Wings of Freedom. These two films are just recaps of the first season of the show. In the case of the first film, it's just a recap of the first 13 episodes. Mostly, anyways. It does keep a lot of the stuff in that you get a chance to see in the anime, plus with some additions and some a little bit of deletions here and there. But in the case of the second part, there's a little bit more. In the case of this one, uh, you get a chance to see a little bit more of the Colossal Titan. Yeah, he gets a lot more screen time in this one than he does in the actual show itself. In the show, he appears for like two episodes, and he only has about a quick like two-minute appearance like the pilot. I mean, yeah, he appears when the show opens up, and he appears like a little bit later. You see him very a little bit, and... You don't get a chance to see him do very much. It's like, oh, it's shocking. We get a chance to see the Klaus Titan. And then all of a sudden we see Titans run all over the place. Yeah, I think they kind of cut that out for some reason. I'm not really sure why. But here they put a lot of stuff back in, especially from Chapter 1. Yeah, it's like they it's like they must have realized, though, that when they made the show, it's like, oh, crap. We cut out too much, a little too much from the first chapter for the pilot episode. So let's put that stuff back in for this episode. Yeah, you get a chance to see a sort of transformation sequence you see a little bit later. Then you get a chance to see um, the other characters who transform into Titans. Sort of transform, bam, there's the Colossal Titan. And you also get a chance to see him bust through the, uh, the gate or the gate of Wall Maria. You get a chance to see him bust the gate and that's how the Titans come in. And you also get a chance to see um, Haynes, I think his name is. Uh, he's the garrison guy who's a, who's a friend of of Aaron, Mitzka, and Armin. And he, you actually get a chance to see him actually try to fight. He goes to fight this mountain Titan, but somehow, for some reason, he gets scared and just picks up Aaron, Mitzka, and just runs away and sees. Well, this is, of course, just after Aaron's mother gets eaten by the same Titan. Of course, the Titan itself was never seen again. Until the end of season two. Yep, it disappears for quite some time. Yeah, you don't get a chance to see Titans like this. Because a lot of the time when you see these Titans, they just only appear for like one or two times. And that's it. Uh, with the exception of the recurring Titans like the Colossal and Armor Titan. But these uh, Titans, we don't know who these people are anyways. Yeah, they just disappear for a while and that's really it. Excuse me. You also get a chance to see a little bit more of the... Armor Titan, yeah, he appears a lot more in this one. Yeah, in the pile, he only appeared for a good, like, minute. <coughs> I mean, all you see him do is bust through the second gate, which leads into, like, kind of leads into the area just beyond Wall, just just beyond Wall Maria. Yep. And that that's all you see of him in the actual pile. And here, you actually see him running. And a little bit more. You get a chance to see him for a good, like, five minutes. Which, wow, that is actually something. You get a chance to see a little bit more of probably one of the best designed Titans of the whole series. A lot of the Titans tend to be drawn pretty much, very much the same. There are some variations where some Titans are just, well, they look kind of different here and there. But the Armor Titan is one of the most well-designed of all the Titans. I would say the most well-designed of all the Titans are the ones that are Titan Shifters. Yeah, the ones that basically where it, they are humans that transform into Titans, those are the most well-designed of all the Titans. Yep. Well, in the case of this one, yeah, the one that's based upon the universe, WWE Universal Champion Brock Lesnar, yeah, this is probably one of the most best-designed ones. Though, in the case of the show itself, he doesn't, he's not revealed it's Reiner until like a little over halfway this season. I know it's kind of a spoiler for some people who haven't watched the show, but yeah, it's it's a bit of a shock per se, but him revealed as the Armored Titan makes perfect sense because of his because of the fact of how well he's built. Yep. 
And when, when the Colossal Titan shows up again, you actually do get a chance to see a transformation sequence. Well, you don't get a chance to see who it is at this point, but you do get a chance to see it. And boom, there he is. Pop up right behind Aaron when he's talking. Yep, you get a chance to see that, even though that in here just poof, popped up out of nowhere. Yep. And you get a chance to see him a little bit more, though in the case when you, can, you see him disappear. Yeah, and also, you do get a chance to see him disappear in the beginning. Here, you already seen that from the show because, well, he did it, he did it also in the show itself. So, yeah, there's that. Um, what else? Oh, yeah, they also took out, uh, this was, of course, just prior to this. They took out a little scene, a little moment when, uh, Meats goes to pick up Aaron to, to break up a fight. Yeah, it, they actually cut that out from the anime for some reason. Yeah, here they put it back in, which, gotta praise them for doing that. Mm-hmm. But, yeah. Let's see. What else? Um, hmm. In the case of, Oh, yeah. They also took out the little moments where you get a chance to see Miska blush over the moment, uh, over the uh, line. With, with, uh, someone, some, over, uh, I think it's uh, one one of the squad commanders saying, uh, referring to Aaron as the man she loves. Yeah. Even though they don't know her relationship to him that well, they kind of think of it like that. And they don't. She doesn't do that out here at all. Nope, you only get a chance to see that in the anime, I think in the manga as well. I don't know why they changed that for it. It's a little bizarre they changed it, but they did. And pretty much you also get a chance to see Miska's how her scar. I mean, they, they reveal in the anime that that's actually from when and when Aaron, when he's in his titan form, kind of unintentionally attacked her. And here you actually do get a chance to see a scar. Now... The attack was unintentional. He was just simply he was simply not in control of the Titan at that point. And from what I can tell later on, Mitsuka has since forgiven him for the unintentional attack because she does not hold a grudge against him at all because he was not in full control at that point. He was just he was just very blinded by rage and he just acted like a normal Titan. So he, she does not hold a grudge against him, and Aaron, it's one of his biggest regrets he's ever done is hurting somebody who's been very protective of him over the years. Yeah, he, he very much regrets it. Yeah. But uh, otherwise, though, when it comes to the first film, they keep do keep a lot in, which I do appreciate him doing that. And now on to, well, they, they end the thing with the credits where they show him in a cell, and, and uh, you have Erdwin, Aaron, and... Levi talking to him is like, what, what, what do you want? What do you want to do? He says he wants to join. Well, in the sub, they refer to as Survey Corps. In the dub, they refer to as the Scouts. But technically, it's a Survey Corps. And Levi is like, okay, fine. And of course, that leads into the next part. Now, this next part is only covering like 12 episodes. Now, in the case of the first arc, now the one thing they do not restore back in for this one, they they don't restore in that back in that much in part two. Of this recap. They only put back in like one thing. And mostly put. They keep everything. And you get a chance to see in the anime. Uh, the only thing they do. Change a little bit of. Is they change Reiner's line. When he gets a chance to see the female Titan. From the rear end. Uh, where he's in, in, in the anime and manga. She, he refers to. He says. Uh, well, he refers to Titan as. Uh, the one with nice ass. Here he doesn't say that at all. He says a different line. I don't know why they changed that. But that was such a cool. That was such an interesting line for him to say because here's the thing about Attack on Titan. Attack on Titan is one of those very few anime, both for the sub and the dub, where they actually can swear. Excuse me. I'm not kidding. They actually do swear in here. The first anime I have ever seen where a character actually swears is One Piece. Yeah, One Piece is the first one to actually do an actual swear word. They actually drop like every single swear word there is, except for an F-bomb. They do, they do drop F-bombs in the sub. In the case of this one, they do drop them in here, but it's not as almost infrequent, uh, not, not as almost infrequently as it is in One Piece. It, it, it happens a lot in One Piece, but here it's like a bit less. But they do swear in here. It's one of those few times you can chance to see characters actually swear, both in the sub and the dub, because... Well, I think the reason why it's allowed for Attack on Titan, because it airs very late at night. That's probably the reason why they, they, they do that. I personally have a problem with it, because it doesn't happen very often. <coughs> now, the only thing they put back in from the manga 
is the little thing of Annie smiling before she transforms. You get to see her transform into the female Titan. Yeah. In the anime, they took it out, and that was at the request of the writer because he regrets doing that particular panel. Yeah, he actually regrets doing that. So, here they just put it back in for some reason. I don't know why, but they did. And the fight between her and Aaron in, in inside Wall Strauss is pretty much the same thing as in the anime. Yeah, there's no virtual change. Though in the manga, from what I've heard, it was, uh, yeah, I, I think I remember, I barely, it's been a little while since I read this particular scene. Yeah, the fight between Aaron and Annie and their Titan forms in Wall Strauss, it was one-sided. Here, it's a pretty decent fight. Though, they do take out the one little scene. I'm kind of glad I took this out because this kind of scene wasn't very necessary to be seen in the anime. Is that they kind of record, open up one episode where you get a chance to see... The, the wall coat just praying, and then here comes Annie just falling right and, and unintentionally killing all, all the members of the current, of, of that cult, with the exception of Pastor Nick. Yeah. But, yeah, they, they actually took that out, which I kind of feel as though that was, that was fine. I had no problem taking it out because, quite honestly, I don't really care about the wall coat at all because they're kind of annoying dicks. And I do like past Nick a little bit because he he's there just to set up the arc with Krista the, the stuff of Krista Krista lens which gets paid off in the uprising which they, they're going to dap into season three so him I don't have a problem with the code itself I just don't really care for because well they want to have some kind of religious thing here so let's just have somebody with a religious back let's just have a religious cult for no reason yeah it's the and by far this is the only religion in this entire, well, walled area. Yeah. I mean, you, you don't get a chance to get other characters get religious. Nope. So you have this. Yeah, and it seems like that the, the wall coat kind of acts like the church, kind of like the Catholic church in a way. Though they worship the walls, and they see the Titans as basically the bringers of God. It's really bizarre. It's something that... Well, they're probably necessary for the show, but I just don't care for them at all. That's just my opinion. All right. Uh, as far as I can tell, aside from that one little thing, they don't really put anything else back in because it flows in pretty much smoothly from the anime. Because, well, there's not much change here at all. They don't put stuff back in, which... Yeah, that's a little bit of a surprise. It's like... Okay, we have part one where you put like a lot of stuff back in, and yet in part two you put in one panel. Yeah, one little thing of Annie smiling. And aside from that, that's. Re oh, yeah, they don't put back in the scene of Mitsuka and Annie over a little flashback of the ring. Yeah, they don't put that in. And also, the, the anime, the, this particular film skips over their time in. During, during the time when they're in training. Yeah, they skip over that for some reason. I don't know why in part one they skip over it for. Because here in the anime, it's like, okay, we have the fall of Wall Maria. And then you have, like, them floating away. And they, they jump five years later and they're graduating from the core. I'm kind of like, okay. Yeah, they, they actually took out the next episode for some reason. I have no idea why. It seems like they just skip over the stuff for uh, episode two and three. Yeah. Two and three and four, that skipped over. They, 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 they do keep the end of um, episode four in it with the whole class time popping up. Mm -hmm. Though the the part two ends with the beginning of season two. I'm not kidding about this. Though season one ends with the reveal that there's a titan inside the wall. And when, when they start off season two, now when the film ends, like during the credits, you get a chance to see like the beginning of what appears to be episode one. Like the first like five minutes of the episode of episode two, uh, one of season two. Now, I know that part two. I know that the second, the 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 next film is gonna come out. I'm not really sure when this film's coming out. It's Roar of the Awakening. That's gonna cover the recap for season two. But the thing is, how much more they can put back in from the twelve episodes that is for season two? I have no idea. But yeah, but but for pacing wise, I've heard that the pacing is improved for these two films. In the case of the first film, yes, I can kind of believe that. Second film, it's the pacing is pretty much the same as it is in the anime. Yeah, there's not much of pacing there at all. 
Yeah. But kind of wish they would add a little bit more stuff that was from the manga. But I guess not. But there's that. So that's it for this particular episode. So stay tuned for whenever we get a chance to part 8, which will be the last one for a little while. Plus one for the part number. Because after that, I'm just doing specials after that. Of course, next video after this, I'm talking about the live-action films for Attack on Titan. Yes, I still plan on talking about those. But the next thing we're going to watch is the for sure Kenshin live-action films. Those are next. And that will be my last video for sure Kenshin. Probably for a while or probably done over with by the time I finish the live-action Kenshin films. Okay? But until you see you in the next video, bye.